Predictions. It's Thursday, January 28, 22. Thank you for being here once again as we pursue God with everything that we are. Let's get started. Been talking all this week about love. What about it? We are called to live out loud. We are called not to live out loud just obnoxiously and disruptively. We are called to live out loud glorifying God, demonstrating his best attribute, which is love. And it's a challenge. And we've been recognizing all week the standard that God holds us to. And he has set the bar the highest on this particular issue. And it's one we need to work at. Today we talk about haters and heartbreakers. We touched on this subject on Monday when we spoke of Jesus's command. A new command I give you, love one another. John's going to put a, a finer point on it in his letter to the church. And perhaps it's because he noticed that this is where we struggle the most. Rivalry. I think we learn rivalry very early on in our development. Sibling rivalry. A desire to have all the attention. And when the attention turns away from us, doing whatever we need to do to regain that attention. And I don't believe it ever leaves us. Everyone enjoys being smiled upon and recognized. Everybody enjoys attention. When that attention comes at the expense of someone else being encouraged. When that desire for attention turns to rivalry, to where we not only look forward to others failing, but we highlight every failure and we even assist in the failure, if at all possible. That isn't the love that God is calling us to. We find this type of rivalry at the workplace. There's only so much room as you climb the corporate ladder. Gaining the attention of your boss, gaining the attention of of those up the chain. Very important for, for your success. Quite frankly, the system is designed to create rivalry out of the, the belief that rivalry brings out the best in us. We are so ingrained in this idea of getting ahead at all cost that it feels as we spoke of yesterday second nature so even as we move into the church that rivalry follow us follows us there
because it's a gathering of people. We often call it the corporate body, simply meaning cooperation. <laughs> We're talking about the body of Christ. But we get to church and we recognize, okay, pastor is the boss, and, and then he's got his hierarchy below that, and I desire to gain more access, so I need to get pastor's attention. To gain pastor's attention... If I have to step on someone else along the way, that's just how it is. That may be how it is in the world. And that may be how it is in your family relationship. But it can no longer follow you into relationship with God. Because the kingdom isn't based on motivating you or motivating the body of Christ by rivalry. Jesus' message is much different than that. Jesus' message is everyone has a home here. The Holy Spirit has gifts in abundance for you to receive. All you have to do is ask. And he will distribute them according to the need. Yet we, as soon as we hear that, we start ranking gifts. Which gifts are better than other gifts? It's time to change. It's time to set down our understanding of how to get ahead and advance, how to gain attention. And learn how to love. For if we excel at loving, we know that the boss is smiling. By the boss, I'm referring to our Father in Heaven. It's as simple as that. It's a simple tool to measure each and every action, each and every thought, each and every word that we speak before we speak it, Will my Father in Heaven smile upon this? Because that's the only attention that has any meaning. It's good to encourage one another. It's foundational to love one another. I'm certainly not suggesting that we don't encourage and give attention to each other. Everyone needs to know that they are moving forward. Everyone needs to know that others see the light in them. But it can't come at the expense of pushing somebody behind so you can be, get ahead. First John 2, 10. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light, and there is nothing in them to make them stumble. The test to see if your heart is tuned to God's is simple. When someone else gets a pat on the back, when somebody else is rewarded, when somebody else is recognized, when somebody else gets the shiny trophy, how do you feel? 
It's the first thought in your head. They don't deserve that honor. I am much smarter, much faster, much holier. How could I not go recognized? What about me? These are the places that God desires to drill down deep and help you address. It's important. For an 11, but anyone who hates a brother or sister is in the darkness and walks around in darkness. They do not know where they are going because the darkness has blinded them. Your relationship with God begins with how you treat others. And specifically, how you treat those closest to you your brothers and sisters in Christ. It's found throughout Paul's letters, encouraging the church to take care of those that are followers of Christ. Now, to the person just reading through those letters, it might sound as if Paul is suggesting there's a club. You don't have to love the world. Just take care of your brothers and sisters. But in light of what we know of Jesus's command, in light of what we know of John's letter, making a finer point of you're not getting anywhere until you learn how to love your brother and sister. It's more likely that the church was doing a better job loving strangers, loving the new people, than it was loving those they had worked shoulder to shoulder with. as mentioned on Monday. It's those that we know or believe we know that we've, we've walked with for a lengthy period of time that we find that we have little compassion for, believe that they have made their own bed, now they're going to have to lie in it. See a stranger on the street who has a simple need, we don't question them up and down of of what choices they've made that led them to where they are and were, were they persecuted or did they make this mess themselves? What do you need? How can I help? We must be reminded not only to love those that God is bringing into relationship, but we also have to remember to love those we already have relationship with, our brothers and sisters. Mind your heart today. Allow God to test it. And if you feel that pang of envy, resentment, allow God to address it. God desires for us to live in the light, to live in the light out loud so others will come. 
imagine what others see when brothers and sisters are squabbling and tearing each other apart. Certainly we agree, not very inviting. Imagine the damage we're doing to one another and to the mission. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for drilling down deep. We crave attention, Lord. We seek you each and every day. Shed us, Lord, of the ways that we used to gain attention. Help us focus on the kingdom and trust that you will add as you see fit. Your smile is why we do our very best each and every day. We seek to glorify you. Search us, Lord, and if there is anything that offends you, draw our attention to it and help us rid ourselves of it forevermore. The envy and rivalry we feel towards one another is toxic. And it hinders our ability to accomplish what you've called us to accomplish. Replace the bitterness, Lord, with compassion and empathy and words of encouragement for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, wrap it up the week tomorrow. Wrap it up the month tomorrow. Till, we, till then, till then, know that I love you and I miss you. Till we see each other again. Be good. <laughs>